was working in Chicago office and I heard that MGM was planning on making the picture using all the little people they could find to be munchkins. So I went out to cold turkey and I found out they were just welcoming all the little people they could get with open arms. It was filmed in color. And when it first showed in color, people said to me, oh, wow, they really hit them hard. It was mind-boggling. All in color, the scenery, the uh, flowers. I was brought up on a dairy farm in Wisconsin. I was, with, at that time, what you call a self-sustaining farm. You raised your own vegetables. If you wanted a chicken dinner, you went out and catch one. You had your own eggs. Our, our, our milk from our dairy cows, we took to our butter factory, and we brought home butter or cottage cheese or buttermilk, as much buttermilk as we could drink for free. My grandparents came from Germany in 1860, so that my grandfather put me through the German primer when I was four years old, so that I was brought up in the German culture, German community. Yeah, I didn't hear an English church service until after I finished college. After my first year of college, I needed something to... So I wrote to the Chicago World's Fair. I had heard about Middle Village. And they said, well, send us a full-length picture. So they hired me, and they signed me to be the, shall we say, spokesman or pitchman for a souvenir stand. And the man who owned the souvenir stand was Japanese. He had Japanese souvenirs, but he couldn't speak fluent English. I could understand him, but he couldn't. I was his pitch man, speaking to the people that came down the midway. Folks, come on over and see our souvenirs here. So for one whole summer, I was doing extemporaneous speaking. Well, I went back to school in fall. Next year, I worked San Diego World's Fair. There I was pitch man. I was, it was, our place was called a midget farm. We had midget cows, little baby shed, small shetland ponies. So I was the only kid that had been raised on the farm. They could do the on horses, so I was the pitch man for the po pony ride, selling rice to the kids. All my life, I have my, made my living public speaking. For 30 years, I worked for the Oscar Mayer Meatpacking Company as their national spokesman did all their TV commercials, and we'd go to different areas. Maybe you've seen, well, I know you've seen in the book, The Wintermobile. Oh, yes. That was my limousine for 30 years. And you gave away the whistles? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Winter whistles first, and then we had a little wiener balloons, and the, the rubber was so tough that the kids couldn't blow them up. I sometimes had to blow up 100 balloons a day. Mickey Rooney came to the MGM set to visit Judy Garland because he was so is the sweet on Judy Garland. And when the picture was shown for the first time in New York, the theater, I have pictures where they have, it says, Wizard of Oz, Judy Garland, Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland. Well, Mickey Rooney wasn't in the picture, but he was so closely associated with her that his popularity and Judy's and the crowds lying all around the block waiting to get into the theater. Margaret Hamilton, the Wicked Witch, in private life had been a school teacher. She was a real people person. She made it a point to go around and get acquainted with each munchkin. He did our picture, and as soon as he finished with us, he did go on with the wind. Uh, he had the, the shall we say, the reputation of being a rather stern director. Well, with the Munchkins, he was entirely different. He'd come over, let's move it over a little bit this way. Let's try it facing this way. He would just come over and try it. He never yelled at us. He just said, let's move it just a little bit this way and, and get a little different angle. Out of the, all those auditions, I was the only one he could understand. So he says, okay, you're the coroner. I had a long distance call from Australia asking me to repeat my lines for them for their radio audience in Australia. 
As coroner, I must have her. I thoroughly examined her, and she's not only merely dead, she's really most sincerely dead. Thank you.